Hello, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Ink Nouveau, and today I'm going to be talking about Mylar paper. This is a super fine abrasive paper that you use to smooth out your fountain pen nibs. This is not necessarily a repair tool so much as it is a refinement tool. If you have a nib that's already performing well and you want to make it super glassy smooth, that's where Mylar will help you out. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Mylar paper. Mylar paper is not something that everybody has in their toolkit, but uh, it's something that I think a lot of people will want. So I sourced this out and we are selling it at GouletPens.com and it is uh, available in two different grit sizes. The green one here is a 1 micron grit and the white one is a 0.3 micron grit. Now a micron is a thousandth of a millimeter, so that's how big the abrasive is, the little you know particles on this paper. That's, that's how big it is. It's very, very, very small, uh, very smooth stuff. It doesn't even feel like an abrasive. It kind of feels just like a, a it feels smoother than a piece of paper even. Uh, but I, I promise you that it will do stuff to your metal fountain pen nib. Uh, basically, if you have a really uh, a, a, a fountain pen nib that, that doesn't feel scratchy necessarily, but just isn't quite as smooth as you want it to be. Uh, that's where my, Mylar can really help you out. It can get your nib to that super glassy smooth state that some people prefer. And uh, I'm going to show you how to use it. Now, of course, I have to give a disclaimer here because with Mylar paper, you are actually though not to a great degree, you are actually modifying your fountain pen nib. And if you are dealing with a pen manufacturer and your pen is still covered under warranty, they would consider this voiding the warranty on your nib. Doing any kind of repair or adjustment or uh, you know, refinement or nib smoothing, anything like that, they, they, don't, they don't really like that. So make sure that you're only doing this on pens that you feel comfortable working on and that you're willing to accept full responsibility for if you happen to take it too far. Now Mylar paper is not a very aggressive uh, tool for your fountain pen nib, so I think in general you're, you're pretty safe, but you know, realize that you can't hold me responsible for anything that you do to your nib. So, you know, I wouldn't offer it if I didn't feel that it was of benefit and that most people could use it responsibly. However, make sure that you know what you're doing and make sure that you take it slow and only work on pens, you know, that are more or less something that you would feel comfortable working on yourself uh, and wouldn't be devastated if you happen to make a mistake. So this is the Mylar paper that you're going to get if you buy it through GouletPens.com. It's two different grits. It's about a 4x6 size, pretty close to it there. Uh, and it is very, very thin. In fact, it's kind of translucent. You can even see through it a little bit. Um, there's actually two sides to it. There's this one very shiny side, and there's this one less shiny side. The less shiny side is the one that has the abrasive on it. That's going to be your working side. If you're trying to smooth your nib on this shiny side, you're not going to get very far because you're essentially just trying to shine it on a piece of plastic. But the, the non-shiny side is the one that's going to be your working side. So this green sheet is your 1 micron and this white sheet is your 0.3 micron. Uh, this is the finer abrasive. So the white is kind of the, the one that if you really, really want to make your nib smooth, that's what the white's for. Usually you want to start with the green, okay? So if, if your nib is pretty smooth and generally okay, the green will get you really smooth. And if you want absolutely smooth as it can get pretty much, uh, that's where the white is going to come into play. All right, so now it's time to cover the steps you're actually going to go through when it comes time to smooth your nib with Mylar paper. Uh, I'm going to start out with the green, so I'm going to set the white aside. Uh, and I've got a pen here. Uh, when it, You want to ink up your pen, okay? This is just a Noodler's Ahab that I have. I actually have a Goulet nib installed in here. 
Uh, it's for demonstration purposes. You know, the Goulet nibs uh, come pretty smooth. They come about as smooth as you would get if you were smoothing it out with micro mesh, which I cover in another video. But micro mesh is a, uh, a different abrasive here. This is more of a, uh, a more aggressive. It's about a tw uh, a twice the grit size of the, the bigger grit mylar paper. So it's, it's a more aggressive approach. That's really for repairing scratchy nibs. But if you want to take an, a smooth writing nib and make it even smoother, the, the one micron is where you want to start. Um, when it comes to choosing an ink, uh, really want to work with something you're comfortable with. I have done a writing sample of every nib that we have at GoulayPens.com with Noodler's Black. So I feel really comfortable using Noodler's Black. If you're comfortable with something else, by all means, use whatever is going to feel good to you and that you have a lot of experience with. Same thing goes with paper. Use a paper that you're comfortable with and that you feel is consistent and uh, th that you have experience with. I've used Rhodia paper, you know, probably more than anything else. Um, so I'm very comfortable with it. So I've inked up my pen with uh, my nib that I would like to smooth to a greater degree. And I'm going to first just um, make some figure eights, make sure my ink is flowing well, get a sense for how smooth the nib is just on its own on the paper. Okay, uh, and uh, I'm just trying to you know make simple figure eights. And the reason I like the figure eight pattern is because you get kind of the full range of the nib, you know, because you're kind of moving it in every direction as you're used doing these figure eights. Um, then you want to kind of take it and with it still inked up, uh, you just put your mylar on a flat surface of some kind, a desk or something like that, table. Uh, and you want to do the same figure eight pattern uh, on the mylar. Now, it doesn't really matter how big your figure eights are necessarily, just something that's comfortable to you. And you want to take it generally pretty slow. I like to do like maybe two or three eights and then bring it back to the paper. And then if I want to make it a little smoother, I bring it back to the mylar again. Now, as far as hand position goes, it's pretty much however you naturally hold your pen. Uh, you're the one that's holding it, you're the one that's smoothing it, so really whatever feels comfortable for you, that's how you should be working. But you want to hold your pen just as you normally would while you're writing and make those figure eights. And just kind of keep going back and forth between the mylar and the paper until you really are happy with how it's feeling. Now, this is pretty darn smooth, but let's say I want this to be even smoother. You know, I'm going back and forth, I'm doing the figure eights, and I feel it's kind of peaked out in terms of how smooth it is. Now this is already pretty darn smooth, but I want to take it even smoother. I'm going to break out my white, my, my 0.3 micron, and I'm going to do just the same thing. You know, simple figure eight pattern. And bring it back to my paper. The reason it's nice to have it the pen inked up is the ink kind of acts as a lubricant to make sure that um, it's clearing away any very, very fine uh, metal that's being essentially polished off as you're doing these figure eights. Um, if you were to do it dry, then theoretically the metal that's being polished away could kind of clog up your, your slit of your nib. It could, you know, kind of affect the feel uh, using it inked up will get you a um, um, more desirable result than if you were to just do it dry. And I'm just kind of, again, just kind of keep going back and forth until I feel really, really comfortable with it. Now you will be able to get this nib to be pretty darn smooth uh, just by doing this. And, um, you know, it is possible to overdo it. So you want to make sure that you know, you're not spending 12 hours on this thing. Uh, but once you feel it's kind of as smooth as it could possibly get, uh, then you really want to stop. You don't really want to do it any more than you have to. And this is, I got to say, pretty darn smooth. Um, after you're done, you know, um, it's not a bad idea to uh, clean out the pen uh, just to make sure that you get any stuff out of there. Or you can just kind of write with it and uh, pretty much, you know, you're not dealing with large metal shavings or anything. You're dealing with very, very minimal, you know, interference in there. So uh, you can just kind of keep on using the pen or it's, it's never a bad idea just to go ahead and clear it out. Uh, but it's never, no, no, not a bad idea too to take a paper towel and just kind of 
you know, press it to the mylar just to kind of pick up any excess ink. You know, after you use it for a while, it's going to look kind of gross <laughs> uh, because, you know, your ink is going to get on here and it's going to, you know, if you're using different inks of different colors or whatever, it's going to look kind of kind of nasty after a while. But it's, it's going to last you a really long time. I would be really surprised if you ever needed to replace this mylar. Uh, really, pretty much the only reason you would need to is if you lost it or damaged it severely somehow. Um, it is possible that it could bend. And if that happens, if you get like a really hard crease in it like that, you're going to want to avoid using that section of the mylar. You don't want to be going over top of a crease because that's going to affect how the nib will smooth. Uh, and so you, you can either, you know, just stay away from that or you can actually cut that off. You know, if you want to store this in multiple places, you could cut this and, you know, store it in two different places. It cuts just with normal scissors. Uh, that's totally up to you. But with these two sheets, you should be well suited for pretty much the rest of your life when it comes to mylar paper smoothing. Once you are done with your mylar paper and you feel you've gotten your nib uh, to your satisfaction, uh, it's not a bad idea to take a brass sheet and just floss your tines a little bit. Uh, if you don't have any brass sheet handy, you know, don't sweat it too much. Uh, but if you do have any brass sheet, it's always a good idea just to floss it out because whenever you're doing any nib smoothing, um, it's always a, there's always a potential for a little bit of the metal to kind of work its way or some of the abrasive that might wear off of the paper uh, to work its way up into your nib slit. And, you know, the chance is pretty small that it's going to cause, you know, a lot of trouble. But if you have this stuff handy, go ahead and floss it out a few times and then you can go about your business. Uh, writing with your new smooth pen. Why am I wearing a blue shirt now? Okay, so when I originally recorded this, I forgot to do the outro. Sue me. And I can't find a black shirt around here. So I got a blue one. thought it was appropriate. Anyway, <laughs> if you got any other questions about Mylar paper, uh, you know, anything I didn't cover here, you can always comment on my blog or on YouTube, or you can find me on Twitter or Facebook. Thanks so much for watching today, and right on. Mm -hmm.